Jantar Mantar in Delhi is one of the most unique set of buildings in the world, which was established by Maharaja Savai Jai Singh, the ruler of Amir. It was built between 1724 to 1730. It is one of the oldest among the other five observatories which are located at Delhi, Jaipur, Varanasi, Ujjain and Mathura. Jantar Mantar was used to trace the astronomical phenomena and to collect scientific data such as position of the stars, moon and other celestial bodies. It was also used to determine the calendar and was used to predict seasonal changes. Originally, Jantar Mantar was built outside the city of Delhi at that time. The city of Delhi in the 1700s was what we call Shah Jahanabad, Old Delhi, the city of Shah Jahan. And the reason Jai Singh built it outside the city was very simple. One was that this was his land. So it was called Jai Singh Pura. And the second was that because it was outside the city, there was nothing practically in terms of buildings and the native landscape in Delhi was very low, scrubs, etc. No bushes, no trees. And that is the first thing you need when you're making an observatory. You need clear vision, you need to be able to observe the horizon, the sky, etc. So he built it outside and it was very, very um, uninhabited. So practically the only built structure would have been the jungle. Uh, you'd be surprised that the way in which you enter the observatory today is not the way in which it was originally entered. Originally it was entered, I presume this is what I'm deducing from various you know, studies that I've done, that right in the beginning it was entered there's this Bhairo Mandir, Bal Bhairo Mandir, which is still part of the Rajasthan state. And uh, so because it was, I think, used as part of the rituals uh, and the astrological uh, predictions in Jai Singh's court, I believe that you could first enter the temple and then proceed to the observatory. And then later on, about 150 years later, it was entered from uh, the NDMC building site is. And this is an outcome of the planning of New Delhi. Maharaja Savai Jai Singh and his astronomers had used instruments which were fabricated in books or metals. The instruments had deformed scales and could not be subdivided into minutes calibrations. Uh, normally you consider stars to be fixed. That's true that stars do appear fixed but they actually move very slowly. So not you know, during our lifetime but during several generations they will shift. So in the Indian astronomy system took record of that. Took and every, you know, some years they would update the tables based on this movement. Now this hadn't happened for a long time, as I said, and therefore what you had calculated was different from what actually happened. And when so Jesse said that look, there's a distance, it's leading us to false calculations, false predictions, and uh, we're not prepared for the thing. So he made a proposition to the Emperor of Delhi, who was Muhammad Shah. Jantar Mantar was mainly known for its yantras. The main function of yantras were to measure local time or to position celestial bodies such as sun, moon and planets. Delhi Jantar Mantar consists of five important yantras. Samrat Yantra. The first and the central instrument of the Delhi Observatory is Samrat Yantra, which is also the oldest Yantra. See, the Samrat Yantra is, is really the most important Yantra of the observatory in the sense that it's, it's the most physically imposing Yantra. And this is, it's an equinoctial sundial. So a sundial is uh, a, a, a means of using the sun to tell the time. 
the samrat yantra consists of two basic elements one is namon a right angle triangle and the other is dials which is two quarter circles originally the dials were each divided into equally spaced time marking of 15 ghatakas or 19 amsas known as degrees each ghataka is divided into 6 amsas and each amsas is divided into 10 palas which is 4 minutes in the western system whereas each pala is divided into 12 divisions of 5 vipalas each which is 2 seconds the samrat yantra is also known as sun clock it tracks time through the apparent movement of the sun as sun moves from east to west the shadows of namon on the dial moves from west to east hence the western dial measures time from 6 am to 12 noon and the eastern dial it measures time from 12 noon to 6 pm the top end of the shadow marking is read as the time it can also be used for measuring local solar time at night and can also measure declination the second yantra is shasthamsa yantra which was considered as savai jaisingh's high precision and yielded accuracy the entrance was sealed for restoration purposes in 1910 due to which it is inaccessible now it is located in the chamber next to the eastern dials of the samrat yantra the main function was to directly observe the declination of the sun and the zenith distance at noon it can also be used to determine the sun's altitude and latitude it consists of twin 60 degree arcs with markings for measuring declination the only source of light in the chamber is a tiny hole above the arc to measure the sun's declination at the noon the observer must enter the chamber and note the center of the round spot of sunlight on the declination and zenith distance scale out of all yantras at delhi observatory the use of this yantra is the simplest and perhaps the most dramatic and appealing for any visitor jay prakash yantra jay prakash yantra is one of the maharaja's most accurate and interesting yantra among all of the other yantras its main function is to locate the position of sun stars and planets it can also be used to determine the local solar time during the day it has been divided into two parts so that the measurer could go inside and calculate the readings accurately then you have the jay prakash which are like they are like these circular cutouts they are like amphitheaters in the ground which are twin buildings there are two jay prakashs its basic elements are sliced bowls with markings crossed wires stretched east to west and north to south and the ring at the center of the cross wire to measure the local solar time one must note the shadow of the cross wire ring that falls on the bowl and then count the number of r circles between it and the meridian circle the measurements of sun's position can be done 
by locating the shadow of cross wire in the altitude and azimuth markings. An azimuth is an angular measurement in a spherical coordinate system. The vector from the observer to a point of interest is projected perpendicularly onto a reference plane. The angle between the projected vector and the reference vector on the reference plane is called the azimuth. Jay Prakash Yantra is also used at night time for measurement of position of stars, moon or planets by locating any of these in line with the cross wires and observer's position and reading value of the altitude and azimuth markings at that position. Though some experts believe that the instrument as it stands today is practically useless. However, experiments have shown that despite of so many faded yantra's markings, it may still be possible to recommission the Jay Prakash Yantra. Rama Yantra is a unique cylindrical instrument of astronomy. Even Maharaja Jaisin had this constructed only in his Delhi and Jaipur observatories. But the one at Delhi is the largest and the oldest. It is made up of two complementary round buildings such that the solid sections of the wall and raised floors in one building are designed as voids in the other. The observer could stand in the voids within the circular floor or the wall. It consists of a central inscribed pillar and an inscribed circular floor and wall around the pillar. Its main purpose is to measure local coordinates of celestial bodies, that is their altitude and azimuth. During the day, when the altitude of the sun is greater than 45 degrees, then the pillars cast shadow on the floor section while when the altitude of the sun is less than 45 degree, the pillar casts shadow on the wall section. Though many markings on the Ramayant are presently missing, but rough azimuth readings are still possible. Since the 30 solid sectors of the 6 degrees each are more or less intact. Mishriyantra The Mishriyantra consists of not just one, but five different instruments. The instruments are Kark Rashi Valai Yantra, Dakshinotra Bhitti Yantra, Laghu Samrat Yantra, Niyat Chakra and Inclined Western Quadrant, also known as Agra Yantra. The first instrument is Kark Rashi Vilayantra, which consists of a semicircular scale with a pole fixed at its center. Its semicircular arc is inscribed with markings. This instrument's main function is to measure the longitude of the celestial objects. The second instrument is Dakshinotra Bhitti Yantra. It is an inscribed semicircular wall, inscribed arc on east wall and a central peg. With the help of these, observers can measure the meridian altitude of celestial bodies. 
the third instrument of mishra yantra is laghu samrat yantra which consists of two quarter circles and two triangle nomons on the east and west ends of the mishra yantra its fourth instrument is the niyat chakras which consists of four semicircular arcs tilted at different angles to the central nomon and provisioned to fix a central pole the niyats are used to read the declination of the sun when it transits the meridian at four different longitudes two to the west and two to the east of delhi to read sun's declination one must note the markings on the arcs where the shadow of the pole falls which is on the west arcs in the morning and east arcs in the evening these yantras were very useful but it was after 1911 and the decision to shift the capital of india from calcutta to delhi that the region around jantar mantar changed dramatically the proposed buildings and roads for new delhi took precedence over the old historic structures of delhi which include this important observatory